Hey there, I'm Kelly with Pink Lemonade Company. Thank you for joining me for this mini folders Procreate tutorial. So first things first, we're gonna set up our file. So we are going to be using a 11 by eight and a half inch file because we're gonna print this out on paper, like cardstock, regular copy paper. I wouldn't do regular copy paper. I definitely do cardstock. But first, first things first, we gotta set up our Procreate file. So we're gonna go to this little plus right here you can scroll down and you can see that there's the paper. If you don't have that, I'm going to pretend like you don't have that because maybe you don't have that, but you probably do. So we're going to hit this little plus icon up here. And right here, we're going to go to dimensions. I'm going to change this to inches because it's at pixels. And we're going to go to the width is a eight and a half by 11. Whoops. And we're gonna hit done. Oh, before we hit done, make sure it has 300 DPI because we definitely want this to be high resolution because we're printing. We're not just gonna use it for online use. So it needs to be at least 300 DPI for high resolution. We're gonna hit create and there we go. Hold up, I wanna stop right here for a moment. Feel free to create in landscape orientation. If you prefer your iPad to be in landscape versus in portrait like I'm using, feel free to change it. The file is actually created with landscape orientation, I just feel more comfortable doing portrait, so that's why I'm using it that this that way, but you don't have to. So from here, we're going to find our file. We're gonna to go to add under the wrench, insert file, and go find your file wherever you have it. I have mine on Dropbox, but you might have it like on your, saved on your iPad, you could have it in iCloud, Drive, so many options. And as you're gonna see, this comes in because this is how I created it in Photoshop, but we're just gonna, Rotate it. Okay, that looks good. I definitely want to extend it pretty much, you know, I want to have a little margin around it, but extend it to where it's at the edge so I can print these out relatively big. Okay, so we have our file and our folders are sitting there just waiting to be decorated because they are so boring and white. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we have that layer one selected, which has our files on it. And then we're gonna cut these up because I want to decorate them individually. I don't want them, well, it's just gonna be easier. I think it'd be almost really, it would be really hard to decorate them at the same time. We're not into that. So what we're gonna do is use our selection tool and mine's already on rectangle here. And so we're just gonna draw a rectangle around this first file making sure to not go you know on any lines just make sure it's really selected and then i'm going to swipe down with three fingers and we're going to cut it let me i do that sometimes when i'm selecting the file it gets all crazy so there's our selection and we got layer one and then we have layer two so now they are ready to be decorated Okay, let me get all set up. So we've got the file, we're gonna cut it, we cut it in two, and then we're gonna insert a paper file. Now this is where you can use the paper files that came with this tutorial, or you could go crazy, and if you have another digital paper that you're wanting to put on top, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go up to the, ear, the gear icon, I'm going to insert file, there we go. All right, now as you can see, the we inserted it, it was in between these because I wasn't on that top layer, I was on layer one, and that is no problem. We're just gonna drag that above. And then what I'm gonna do from here is, I just wanna remind you, because we're gonna keep adding files, and if you are more organized than I am, you could at this point, like, rename your files. So if you wanted to, re you know, rename this, like, um, folder one. And then you could name this one folder two. Of course, this is optional, but it will keep it nice and neat as we are adding more layers. We're also gonna wanna duplicate this paper layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and swipe to the left and hit duplicate. And then I'm gonna drag this down here. So there's gonna be papers on each folder. Also, you could rename those. I'm just not going to because I don't rename folders a lot of times or I don't rename layers a lot of times because I'm 
unorganized like that, but if that's the thing that you want to do, like feel free to do that. So we've duplicated the paper file and then we are just going to put clipping masks on each of those. So I'm going to go, I'm going to turn this one off just for the sake of being able to see what I'm doing. But with this bottom paper that is over folder two, we're going to click it and hit clipping mask. And so look, it's already looking more like a file folder because that paper is kind of colored like a file folder. Okay, then we're going to go up to the top paper. We're going to turn these layers back on and we're going to do the same thing. Hit it and clipping mask. That is awesome. Now at this point, you could go ahead and merge down. That way it's, you know, like adhered, it's pasted on to your folder. But I'm not going to do that just because I might want to use this whole file later, like this whole Procreate setup. And I might not want to use that one. Like if I want to come back in here and create another set of files, maybe I wanted to use a different color paper. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why I might want to keep everything intact this way. But again, that's personal choice. Okay, so we have our clipping mask above each folder. And this is another reason I just thought about this of why you wouldn't want to go ahead and merge them down because what we're going to do is we're going to turn the opacity down on each of these folder papers because I want to be able to see that fold line right there. So I'll know kind of, you know, I don't want to decorate each side the same and this is going to give me a, a little guideline of like where I need to put my designs. So I'm going to do the same thing over here and then let's go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and mm, what are we going to do? I'm going to do this folder down here. So this folder number two is our bottom layer. And I'm just going to hit the plus sign because I'm going to add a layer above that. Now I'm going to go over here and choose this pink. And then I already kind of have a design in mind. So I am going to go over to my fancy brushes. And let's see. I'm going to use this top one. It is probably sized very big. Let's see. Yep. So I just am going to turn that down a little. Oh, too much. And I should turn my brush hover on. I just don't have it on at the moment. That's okay. So I'm going to make sure this I'm going to increase this. No, I don't want to increase the size too much. Where do I want to put that? I want to put that about right there. This is completely optional, personal preference. You could use a different color. You could use a different brush, but I'm good with that one. So I'm going to clip layer five to the folder file paper, file folder, folder file, file folder paper and do that. And then I'm going to make another layer above there because I'm going to decorate this bottom part down here. I'm going to use the same pink, but let's see what do I want to use? I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. I don't know why I turned them down before because obviously I can just resize it because that's what I'm doing anyway. But there is no method to my madness. And I'm going to clip mask that on top of it. So you can see like we're starting to get, you know, a customized file look. I'm going to check it just to see how it looks without that line on there. And I'm, I'm really liking the results so far. So I'm going to turn that back down. And then I want to add another layer because I'm going to add two little, I'm going to say embellishments. So I'm going to choose this turquoise tillish color. And then I'm going to go over to my PLC border brushes and I want to use this like the stamp botanical brush. And that's just going to go along the this side. This It's not the bottom, but what the right side. And we're going to use that. So let's see how that looks. I'm kind of liking that. So as you can see, some of the sometimes with the border brush or a brush like that, like that worked. But it'll, it, depending on the angle of your pencil, it could be weird. So I'm going to show you if you just hold that down it's going to straighten that that border brush up actually that's not exactly symmetrical or it's not um even there we go i'm going to just adjust that and then we're going to clip it down with the clipping mask and then i'm going to add one more on there and i want to use kind of a chartreuse truce color is that a word chartreuse -y? 
And then we're gonna go back to the border brushes and I wanna use the doodle lines. I like that one. And we're just gonna put that across the, the top. Did I make another layer? Nope, I did not make another layer above your botanical stamp. And then I'm gonna go right there. I'm gonna just hold it down to even it out and then clip, 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 clip. Okay, so that one I think I'm good with. I like that. Um, no, I was gonna add some contrast. That's what I was gonna do. So it needs some black contrast. There's just too much of kind of the same, um, like, you know, it just needs a little different differentiation. So I'm gonna go to black or just something similar to black. And then I'm gonna go back to my fancy brushes and I'm gonna use this fancy brush 12, which is the stamp like this. So I want this just to be a little smaller. It's just old, like an old um, book card. What are those called? Book plate thing? I don't know. It says author, title, due date, for like a library card. And I think that is just so cool. And then we're going to clip and mask that. So now I'm going to go back to my paper. I'm going to turn up the opacity and call it good. So from here, what we could do is because we are done with this second folder, folder two, we could go through and write swipe all these and hit group so it's kind of out of our way it's nice and orderly and then if we ever wanted to come back in and we you know have all these layers we'll know exactly which one goes to which again you could rename this you could say this is folder two and call it good so we're done with that and we're going to move on to folder one so on to folder one i'm going to go above the paper and create a new file and then we're going to decorate this one so this is such a quick easy project and you could come in here and create tons and tons of folders like that just with a few brushes a few colors and clipping mask it's just amazing what all you can create with just so you know such simple tools okay so on to i'm going to go back to that pink and let's go through the fancy brushes again which one am I going to do? I think I'm going to use this fancy brush 10. And we're going to stamp it right there. I'm going to move it up a little bit because I want more coverage on that tab. I like it. And clipping mask. And then create a new layer. And for this bottom, I'm going to use the turquoise. So it's like we have a coordinating set. Obviously they don't have the same pictures, but there's the coordinating colors and they kind of have just a, a nice little vintage vibe going. So I'm gonna use Fancy Brush 8. I'm gonna stamp. Did I create a new layer? Yes, I did. Okay, we're just gonna stretch that out a little bit just to get it all good and covered. If this was like this, like I wouldn't even mind that. Like you could have like a little area of the background or the back of the folder going on the front. Like that would be cool. Um, I'm not doing that on this one, but I have done that in the past. Okay, and then clipping mask down. Do I wanna add anything else? I kind of don't. I'm kind of liking the result there. So I'm gonna go back to the opacity on the paper. Everything's good and clipped. Um, so at this point we could group and we could name it. Folder one, and again, this is just helpful in case you ever come back into this Procreate layer or Procreate file and you wanted to adjust anything and you didn't want to, you know, there's so many layers. And of course, as you go on, like you can just end up with so many layers and this just keeps everything nice and organized, even though I will be truthful, I don't really do a lot of file organization um, as I'm creating, but there we go. So you know what? I think we're good. I think we are ready to export these and get them printed. So here is my export process. Again, you might export to, um, let's see, we're going to share, go to wrench. Sorry, I didn't even finish my sentence. Go to share. And then you could do it as a JPEG. You could do it as a PNG. What I'm going to do, now I'm going to print these out. So obviously I'm going to print it on white cardstock. So it's going to have a background when I print it. But just in case I wanted to use it for something else, I'm going to go ahead and turn that background off. And then I'm going to share it as a PNG. Now, here's my process. This is where I send it over to Dropbox and I 
can name it something. But you might, you know, you might. I'm going to send it to Dropbox. Gosh, I should really finish my, finish my sentences. I apologize. I will try to be better about that. I am going to send this to my computer. And I have a PC and this is an iPad. And I don't have a Mac or I could airdrop it. But I use PC. And so I'm going to use go uh, Dropbox as my go-between. That's my bridge. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to name it file folder, folder file three. It should be file folder. Why is that so hard? I'm going to do that because I think I already have like a two in there. So now what I can do is we're going to move over to my PC. But at this point, however you print stuff out from Procreate, that's where you would do that. So if you don't have this extra step where you transfer it over to your PC. And the reason I do that is I'm a little bit anal about like I know this file is set up perfectly well. But I like to pull it up into Photoshop just to make sure I can give it a good once over. That's kind of just like an obsessive thing of mine. And you definitely do not need to do that. But that's what I'm going to do next. So I'll meet you over at my computer. Okay, so I have the uh, file that I sent from Procreate through Dropbox over to my PC. And I have it in Photoshop right here. And you can see it's a transparent PNG. And so that I just like to do that just in case because what if there's something I want to do with this folder or this file digitally? I don't with this one necessarily right now, but who knows? In a month from now, I might decide to do that. So I do like to do transparent backgrounds. Um, now on this one, I could print it out as a PNG. I mean, the squares are not gonna show, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a white background on this. Again, please, whoops, that was my pattern. Um, Please understand, like this step is really not necessarily. It's just I create a lot of graphics and I use a lot of, you know, the go-between between Procreate and Photoshop. And so it's almost just a like once over for me just to make sure everything's good. I'm going to check the image size and, you know, we're still at 8.5 by 11, 300 DPI. And then I can go and print it out from here. So... This is great too. I think it's also, it's helpful for me if I can pull it up on a screen like this because if I needed to zoom in and just, I mean with this file folder, it's not really a thing, but like if I wanted to make sure they're good crisp edges, like when I'm creating graphics for PLC Insiders or something, you know, something like that. And so I can just pull this up, make sure that everything looks really good. Just checking everything. I love the patterns going on here. Again, that library card is just so cool. I think this is going to be such a fun little project. Um, I have no idea really what I'm going to do with the file folders at this point, but I've made these in the past, and they always end up being something fun. Okay, so let's print this out. All right, so we have it printed, and all I have to do from here is cut it out. Now, there are two methods that I could do. Sometimes I use my Silhouette Cameo to cut it out. Like, I'll pull the file into there and just do a print and cut. But I think I'm just going to use scissors. Now, because the tabs and the edges are rounded, I have this punch that I use for rounded paper or rounded corners which I love, and I can leave the link for that if you're interested in that. I use it a lot, especially like in my journal pages. So I'm just gonna use some scissors, cut this out, and then clean up the edges because I'm not confident that I will actually, I will try to be careful, but just to make sure I get those rounded edges, I'm probably gonna use my little um, corner punch on this to get these nice smooth edges where my scissor may miss. And because I've done most of the creativity or most of the embellishments in Procreate, there's not a lot left to do. Now we could always take this further, but I'm pretty happy with the design as is. So I think it's time to cut it out and see what I'm gonna do next with it. And voila, the magic of television. <laughs> so I printed, or I cut it out and you can see that I roughed up the edges with this Distressed Oxide. I love this stuff. It's just an ink that you can add to the edges. Just, And I think it gives like a finishing touch. I also painted the inside with just a cheap craft paint, like an acrylic paint. And I may go back and do some more to that. I like obviously, you know, left some brush marks in there. And I'm okay with that. So... I think we're good with that. I even added like a little pencil mark. There was some paint that accidentally ended up over there, but I think it looks pretty nice. So back to the hole punch or the 
corner punch. Here's a sh sample sheet, and so just do that, and it just rounds those corners. So it's just a fun little tool that I find that I use probably a lot more often than I thought I would when I bought it. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you so much for joining me in today's tutorial.